Hi, I'm Drew Hutcherson. You're tuned to Local Bias. We come to you from 393 Main Street in Greenfield. And today my guest is Al Norman. Al, welcome to the show again. One Thank of my you, Drew. I often say my favorite guests. Well, I've done 183 episodes now, and, and I rank you among my favorite guests. And part of it is because it's so entertaining, because people want to hear what you have to say. And for me, it's also important because you basically correct my misunderstandings of situations. So I'm asking you to correct me uh, where I'm wrong. Well, if this is supposed to be an entertainment show, I'll put on my tap shoes. Oh, well, you don't have to dance. All but right. but um, the, we've, lately in Greenfield, and I don't know if this, what, where, when this is going to air, so this may be after the fact, but I still think it's important to, to have this conversation. Greenfield, there are residents who feel we need a new library. There's an opportunity to get one. The state is providing a grant. I don't know how long that grant is good for. End of April. We have to use it by the end of April. So the end of April. So there is a bit of a pressure for the town council to vote on it and approve it so that it can move forward, and yet there is some opposition even though this seems like a, a no-brainer. What's going on? Well, first of all, um, I'm a library supporter. I've got a sign in my lawn. I was probably one of the first to put a sign up. And I've been, I was working with the library organizers to help get people motivated to support a library. So I went to all the meetings, um, you know, listened intently to all the presentations. So I was one of the people who was saying, we need a new library. Um, I didn't know all the details about the cost and, and the spin-off of the fire station. But the point is, is that it all sounded like a reasonable proposition until at the very end, uh, when the town council was, was uh, trying to line up their nine votes, because they needed two-thirds votes, uh, a tail, the tail of the dog was, was, uh, had a, a, a ribbon tied on it uh, to, to make the package, uh, uh, you know, really uh, irritating to the dog. Um, and that, that, that tail that was, that was put on the dog, the, the ribbon, was a completely unrelated uh, zoning issue, mm -hmm. had nothing to do with the library, was something that had failed miserably two years ago, but was resuscitated because one counselor realized he had the opportunity to hold the others hostage by creating a, a deal that could not happen without his ninth vote. So he could have brought up the worst thing you can imagine and the other counselors who wanted the library would have said, fine, we'll take it, whatever. And, and they, they came up with this private deal to do a library in return for a zoning change. The only problem was it was a bad zoning change that was unpopular, rejected by the, a more conservative town council in 2017, plus anybody who was in favor of the overlay as it was was not invited to the table uh, to talk about it until a deal was already struck and language was already introduced and introduced then to the public at a town, town council meeting to so-called initiate it and the public wasn't allowed to talk at that meeting. So all of us who were not consulted, not in favor of the, of the zoning fiasco, still have not had a chance to say anything publicly and the thing is already uh, at the uh, uh, planning board uh, and, and economic development committee level. So it's a, it's a classic example of no transparency, uh, and people uh, working behind closed doors to come up with a plan that some people like, others people don't, don't like, but a compromise has not been reached yet because some of the major players weren't even asked to participate. The people who live out there, mm -hmm. the Nolan Beka Native Americans who own f uh, 40 acres out there, none of those people knew what was going on. Uh, it's, it's really uh, a, a terrible way to do business. And, it's, and, it's, and it's running into you the other day, mm -hmm. and we had this conversation, that was really the first I'd heard of it in those terms. When, when I had heard about it, um, Rudy had said something on Facebook about coming up with this compromise. And my first instinct was, boy, I hate the idea of, use, of basically the zoning change, because right. I've been opposed to Walmart and, the, and zoning that area for development. Um, but I've always been someone that felt that, well, we need to be able to compromise. But what you're telling me is that my instinct for compromise in this case is misguided. Well, if the Israeli government said they were going to compromise on, on, on Palestine, mm -hmm. but they didn't invite Hamas to the table, right. you'd say, well, that's kind of self-serving. They didn't bring in the other side. That's right. In this case, there were three issues at play. There was a, there was a library, there was a, a zoning change, and then there were people who were against the zoning change. And, and the third party, those against the zoning change, were not consulted at all. In fact, I learned later 
that it was a deliberate move on the part of the people that had met privately. They agreed, we won't tell Al Norman about this, let him read it in the paper. So I was deliberately excluded so that my thoughts and my voice could not be put into the mix so that I could say, wait a minute, instead of doing the zoning change that you're thinking about, how about this? How about tweaking this or that? Mm -hmm. I think we probably could have worked something out, but they didn't even want to bring in the people that they knew would be enraged. And instead, instead they had the nerve to say, we think this compromise will heal old wounds. It seems to have created new wounds. Well, that's right. And it's going to get even worse because I think that the, the process, sometimes when you have bad process, you end up with bad outcomes. And right. in this case, that's what I think we've got. We've got We've got town councilors saying publicly, I went home after hearing about this and got, and got so angry. And, and I had a, a town councilor who said, I ran on a platform of being pro-library and anti-Walmart. Right. And now, I, now I, can't, I can't possibly you know, make my constituents happy. I'm gonna let somebody down because of a, of a setup. I, I felt set up. Right. Town councilors felt set up. Mm -hmm. And I think as a result, uh, people are, are dealing with uh, a Hobson's choice, which comes from a, an innkeeper who used to tell people, you can sleep right next to, to the horses. That's your choice. Right. If you, want to, if you want to sleep next to the horse instead of in a room, you can have that. And so the choice was, you got the stable. So, you know, we're getting the stable here. We're, we're being told, you got to sleep next to the horses. And I, I, I just think that this is not a moment of, of, of profile and courage. This is not transparent government. I think it's government at its worst, and I, I think they're making a big mistake. So the, how can that be called a great compromise? Right, no, I mean- There's no compromise and it's not great. I, I would say I stand corrected, but I'm sitting, so I, I'm, I sit corrected. <laughs> well, you know, they say a compromise is when both parties feel, feel unhappy. Right. Well, this, the, you know, uh, this only one party. <laughs> one party feels very thrilled that they're going to get right. their library, and everybody, and and another party is thrilled that they're going to get their zone. But the people who have the most uh, interest and the most at stake in the French King not, were not le uh, led in, into the into the uh, inner sanctum, and as a result, they're they're big time losers. That's not a good compromise. So okay, so what are the options? Well, they could have sat down with people uh, publicly, publicly, right. like at an ordinance committee, and said, okay, look, this is what we want to do. They, they, they took, I, I was told that these negotiations privately went on for, for four to six weeks. During that time, they could, have, they could have just gone to the ordinance committee and said, look, we, we want to rewrite, uh, we have a counselor who would like to rewrite this code. We have a library we're trying to pass. Can we work something out and, and work something out uh, visibly so that the public could have sat in the audience and listened to the ordinance committee and made comments. Right. They could have taken it, uh, you know, to, um, to the planning board at the same time. Everything that they're doing now, now it's public, you know, right. but it's public after the after, handshake and right. after the deal. And I, I resented that. And they could have backed up and done it uh, um, in the public, in the public eye and, and hashed through it and said, okay, look, instead of, instead of eliminating the overlay zone, we're going to keep this and keep that. Uh, gas stations by special permit. I mean, there are things that could have been done, okay. and I hope still can be done, but because there's still, we're not at the finished line yet. So the actual motion hasn't been written? No, the, well, the, 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 the amendment has been written, okay. and it has been initiated. That's step one. Now there's an opportunity for the planning board to weigh in, okay. the public to weigh in via the planning board. But what we're saying is, Normally, you don't want to start with a deal already ha with the, the, the president of the council announcing, right. I've agreed to something. Right. That's not how you start things. President of the council should have said to the councilor who was uh, irritated and wants something more, okay, we'll bring it to the council and see what they want to do. So do you feel she was naive in this situation? I don't want to try to figure out why she made the mistake, but, uh, and, and she's a very nice person. Yes. I'm not a, a, a right. casting any aspersions. I think it's a mistake. Now, right. I don't really, I can't plumb the, the reasons why that because, mistake Because, I mean, if they made. were actually talking for four to six weeks, mm -hmm. that was plenty of time to bring in some cooler heads. Well, or to say, let's, or kick, it, let's kick it over to the council and let's debate it. There rather was still than, time. Yeah, they could, have, they could have spent the time at the council level publicly talking about this. But I think that, you know, the, the fact is, is that this is not great process. Now, right. you can say whatever the motivation was. It doesn't matter because it, it's, it's done. Right. And by the time I found out about it, it was done. And I don't, I don't ever like to see deals done before it even gets 
to be public. Now you could say, well, now you have a chance to undo it. We will try to ameliorate it. We'll okay. try to make it better. I, I honestly will do that. I've been writing and talking to people about how to do that. But the fact, it really is not helpful when you have the leader of the council saying, I have met with a, actually some counselors, I don't know how many, I met with some people and some counselors. That's what she, she wrote me and said, I met with some, some other counselors to come up with a plan. And I just said, well, you know, my number, you know how to reach me. Mm -hmm. why, why weren't the, you knew, you knew who would be affected. Right. Why weren't, why weren't we, I, I said, I think I was deliberately excluded, left in the dark. Why didn't you call me? And there was no answer to that. No, no, no just, well, I talked to some people and I talked to some counselors and we came up with this plan. And, I, you know, she lives two blocks away from me. She could, you know, I said, it this is a small way. town. Right. You know, you could call me, you could walk over and tell me you were working on something. I was deliberately left out, as were the landowners, as were the Nolan Beca, et cetera. So I just don't think the process, uh, the process left so much to be desired. So, I mean, so in a way, it, it's, it's, I mean, it, I, I look at the macro level of what we have going on. Mm -hmm. And we have um, Trump basically throwing a temper tantrum like a little child because right. it's not getting his way. Right. I'm going to close the government. And I'll, oh, he said he was proud of, to close the right. government because, he, right. because of his wall. Right. I kind of see parallels. Well, uh, my, the analogy I made was very clear, and the counselor who proposed it was unhappy to be compared to the president. But I said, How can you not I said, make a comparison? I said, look, uh, Trump, Trump told Congress, I want my border Walmart or I'm going to shut down the government. And the counselor who wanted the border Walmart is saying, I'm going to shut down your library. Right. That's, how is that because, different? Because, because I want to eat at Outhouse, uh, Outback Steakhouse. Right. So he did not like being compared to Trump when yeah, his actions he, are... He, yeah, he, he was not happy about being compared to the President of the United States, which is, is maybe is a statement about the President of the United States as much as the counselor. But right. um, the point is, is that I, I don't see any bit of difference. I don't see any because light between unrelated. the two. Because they're unrelated. Totally unrelated. Well, the, the counselor said, well, people who don't like the library are complaining that how are we going to get the revenue to build it? So let's put some gas stations and restaurants up on the French King. And I said, look, um, Wendy's pays $13,000 a year in taxes. Uh, if you built three of them out there, you need 168 years to pay off a $10 million bond. Right. I don't, ha I don't have 168 years to wait. I don't think anybody else is going to be around to see whether, whether it made sense to try to build your future, uh, you know, on, on fast food. Right. Uh, I'm, you know, and gas stations. You know, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like bottom feeding. It's like saying that our town's future is so dependent that we can't build a library unless we build more gas stations and restaurants. I mean, what, what about our industrial park? Right. That land out there on the French King was originally zoned uh, uh, industrial. Right. For, for, for many years, from its creation in 1993 until 2004, it was General Industrial. Our industrial park is filled. Okay. People, people say it's successful. I look at some of the taxes being paid by the companies out there, and they're triple what, what a restaurant or a gas sure. station would pay. So I think, well, why, why aren't, you know, one, one counselor said, I think we should devote more land to, to industry. It's, a, it's sort of a, a bigger payback for our future Clearly. to be able to have uh, a higher property taxes, better paying jobs that give people more discretionary income to spend it downtown or elsewhere to boost the whole economy. Instead, we have people arguing for gas stations. I have never heard of a town, and I've never seen it in any master plan in Greenfield, that ever said, what we need is more gas stations and fast food restaurants. That you will not find that in the master plan. I don't care which year you look at. Well, it doesn't it, make any economic it, sense, Of course really. it makes no economic sense, and it's no, nothing a planning a, a, a thoughtful planning process would ever produce. So now we're doing something that I think is very similar to a tantrum. I want my zone or I'm going to shut down your library because I'm, I'm the last vote. You need me. So this is what I want or your library is, is history. So now what happens? I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I don't live in Greenfield and I don't serve on the town council, but I'm a progressive. And mm -hmm. if I were one of the members of the town council and this was going on, I might tell Rudy, well, Rudy, then you can't have my vote. I mean, where does it end? Well, I think people are so scared of losing their library and the state grant that they're, they're afraid to... I've had counselors say to me, I'm, I'm appalled by what I'm being asked to do. But, but what choice do I have? Again, Well, maybe they can play hardball the way Isaac well, is. Well, I, I think they should. I mean, for example, the counselor who proposed the idea of turning it into industry 
you know, she should tell she should tell the the president, I'm 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 not supporting it. I'm unless not you, gonna, right. Yeah, you got to change that zone. That zone, you know, I want you to protect the overlay. You want to talk about uh, gas stations and uh, and restaurants only as a special permit. You know, not right. not as of right. And uh, I, I want some other changes made. I don't, I don't want the thresholds for the major development review uh, to be so high that nothing will ever be reviewed as a major project. Right. You know, these are the games that they're playing with this language. I don't. I, th I think that that should be happening right now. That's what should be happening. Some of the councils should be pushing back and saying, saying to Isaac, if you want your zone, then then we want you to make it more more uh, palatable, more reasonable, and not so extreme. Uh, and, and, and not something that's based on, on your, your desire to eat at a steakhouse. Right. Because the, 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 there, there has been absolutely no evidence shown that, that the changes that are being proposed for the French King will generate any significant revenue. Right. And I cited the Wendy's example. Um, no, no, the other major reason was if we open up a new uh, commercial zone, uh, another strip zone on the edge of town, uh, which will move people and money out of the downtown. If we do that, we're going to ease up traffic on Federal Street. Well, no, nobody has any idea what the traffic flow is going to be like and why it would change a single behavior of a, of a, of a motorist on, on, on the Federal Street. I mean, th this is all being done on emotion. Right. It's not fact. Right. And, and I don't think, I, I said to people, don't ever zone out of desperation. Right. Because when you do, you're going to get a desperate result and people aren't going to like it. Well, isn't that akin to doing spot zoning in a way? Well, the, the, the actual, the, if you look at the proposal that has been forwarded to the town council, it takes the whole length of the French King from Stop and Shop uh, North, and it, it, it eliminates the overlay zone on the whole part, except one little piece, one piece of land at the very end that the, the, the Native Americans owned, that's, ar that's already protected. They're not about to open up gas stations. Right. So they, they kept it there to try to thwart people from doing what's called a, a protest petition, because if 20 percent of the land area owners say they don't like this, then the town council has to have 10 votes to pass it, three quarters, instead of two thirds, nine. So it, all of that, all of that, you know, charade of saying that we're going to have out at the very end of the French King, we're going to have one parcel in a zone. You tell me that's not spot zoning. I mean, it's, that, is, it's, that it's, is spot zoning. It's so now. cynical. It is it, spot it's zoning. so cynical what they've done. And again, the same councilor two years ago tried it and it, it got such a bad reception, he had to table it. Right. And because the recorder it, came out against it. Absolutely. Back then. The recorder editorialized why the rush towards a French King rezoning. And the opening line was uh, um, the councilor seems to be the only person in town who wants more gas stations. Right. And the end of it said, this zone will have an impact on the downtown, and that should be studied and made clear before any vote is taken. Memories are short, so, though, Al. Memories, I know. I got a great memory. It's just short. <laughs> so two years ago, th basically, that, that proposal was so badly received um, that it had to be withdrawn. And that was a conservative town council at the time. That That's right. More conservative than today. And today, a progressive town council has been stampeded and, and, mm -hmm. and, and ambushed into voting for something that they're holding their nose on with the idea that that's the only thing we can do to save the library. My response was, um, don't do a bad deal. So who is the town councilor that represents the district? I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. Okay. But, but the thing is, is that all it will take, just like as Isaac's ho holding the town council hostage. Mm -hmm. It's not his precinct, it's by not the way, his, no. uh, on the French case. So, you know, turnabout is fair play. Uh, I, look, I, I agree completely. Um, I, I believe that, that a town council would be justified in saying, okay, you put me in this spot today. Um, after we vote for the library, the next day I'm going to vote to overturn, because this is wrong. This zone, this zone goes against my beliefs. I told voters I was anti-Walmart. I am not going to do this. It's going to have an impact on the, on the court case that's coming up four days later. I refuse to do this, but as soon as you release me from my bondage, as soon as I'm freed from this hostage deal, I'm going to, I'm going to vote my conscience. I'm going to vote against this plan. Um, and any, any one of them who vote for it, can, can change their vote. They could reconsider it right. the next day. So, okay, so there is a maneuver, a parliamentary maneuver. Well, there's basically. several. There's several. There's okay. several ways that this can happen, but the point is, is that the first, the first step is to recognize that this is a hostage, hostage taking. And some mm -hmm. people resent that word, but I think, 
I think what Trump did, and I think what this counselor is doing, is no more than a form of extortion. Right. You know, you you vote for this, or I'm 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 tubing your ten million dollar grant. Right. So so How is I, that I got you over a barrel. Right. And I'm going to take advantage of you and make it happen. I'm going to make you vote for something that, under normal circumstances, you wouldn't do. They then, after they're freed, they can say, free at last, I'm voting against this zone, it's a bad idea. I mean, otherwise, it's, it's like admitting that, uh, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm stuck with a, la a, a dog of a vote that I was forced to take mm -hmm. in order to get something good for the town. Now I'm going to rectify that by preventing something bad from happening to the town. So that is a possibility. Well, I, I, it takes a little bit of courage. It takes a little bit of, uh, of spine to do that. Okay. Um, and then there are other options as well that I'm not going to go into at this okay. point. But let's just say at this point, the, the end of the story is not the March 20th vote. That's maybe the beginning of another story. <sighs> this story has been going on a long time. It's gone on too long. And it's ridiculous that, that uh, you know, one person on the council who, who doesn't have a majority of the votes is trying to hold the majority up by saying that, you know, uh, you, you need a two-thirds vote, you need me, I'm, I'm going to force you to do something you may find very distasteful. But he's and, only one vote. That's correct. Right, but they need a ninth vote. Well, what, what about the other counselors? Well, what about them? Half of them, when they, when they introduced this amendment the other night, uh, there were five counselors who didn't show up, and they were all people who don't like the library. So you had the, the sort of anti-library faction didn't even show up. What are they going to do? Who knows? Th those are people who d may not, even with, even with the vote that's been arranged on this bad, on this bad zoning deal, th they may still not vote for the library. Right. The, you know, the town council doesn't need them. If their eight votes hold and they have a ninth, right. they can get it. But the point is, is that um, this is the time for some of the counselors who, are, who have told me they're progressive to, to, show, back, it. to show it, to right. back off and say, uh, don't count on my vote unless you alter this, this amendment. And, and quite frankly, the issue that th those of us on the left have run into many times is, th is that we're too nice. Mm -hmm. It's always that, why are we bending over for the conservatives mm -hmm. all the time? Yeah. It is well, time to... The counselor, the counselor that's slapping them around is doing a real number on them. You know, the, that's why one counselor said, I went home and I was uh, storming around the house angry. Right. But I, in the end, I'll vote for it. I mean, he, you know, he, he's managed to put them you know, in a nice setup position, and now he's just slapping them around. And I, I just think that you know, they, they, can do, they can do the same thing. They can play brinksmanship with mm -hmm. him and say, you know, that what you proposed is harmful. I don't want more gas stations. I don't want more drive through restaurants out there. What's the point? It's not going to save us financially. Um, you, don't know, you don't know what you're talking about when you talk about traffic. You're not a traffic engineer. You know, let's... But, okay, so let's take a look then at the, why they may oppose the library. And mm -hmm. my understanding is that, well, the price tag means it's going to be a burden, especially on seniors on fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. um, the mayor said it's not going to affect the tax rate. Right. Um, but nonetheless, it is a cost. However, haven't people been stepping forward that support the library and have been committing money to, to help build this library? Yeah, in fact, I know one family that rescinded their donation when they heard it was going to come at the expense of the French king. Okay. They actually called up the, the guy who's coordinating the donations and said, withdraw my money, my pledge. Talk about standing up for your values. That's I right. thought that was pretty cool. But the, the, you know, the fact is, look, um, p people talk about affordability. Um, we, we were supposed to get floated by all, all, if we brought in all this big box retail, you know, BJ's, <laughs> Home right. Depot, Walgreens, all, all these national chain stores, we were supposed to reach prosperity by now. Um, the reality is that the share of the tax burden in, in Greenfield um, in the year 2004, the, the, uh, the share that was being paid by retail was 18%. Fast forward 15 years, the share of the tax burden in Greenfield, the percentage share that is being borne by retail is 18%. No change in 15 years. So we've added all these big box stores and, and uh, tractor supply, et cetera. What, what we've got today is still the residential homeowner, like me, is still paying 75% of the tax burden in Greenfield. Um, in industry is 3%. And, and commercial is 18%. So, so one counselor got up and said, I'd like to see us leave a little bit of land open for an industry. You know, I'd like to aim higher. I'd like to look higher, and I'd look to get a bigger payoff, and I'd like to see the French king 
have some industrial land available. And they, I mean, you know, does, does anybody disagree with the notion that industrial jobs pay better and support a no, community they don't, better? No, they don't disagree with that. But, but the, the counselor, the counselor who, who proposed this bad zoning deal said, oh, well, I, I'm, I'm in favor of mixed use. Would you consider that? And the other counselor said, well, you didn't propose mixed use. I'm, I'm going to leave mine as general industrial. But the fact is, if, the, if these people would sit down with each other, you don't need mixed use zones in Greenfield. What you've got, for example, in the general industry zone in Greenfield, you've got a bunch of uses, like 24 uses that are permitted, and then you have another 14 or 15 that are done by special permit. You know, total of around probably 30 or 40 different kinds of uses. Some are industrial, some are not, including retail, incidental retail, they call it. You can, you can take a zone and you can say, okay, we'll add this and we'll add that and we'll, we'll put them together into one zone. You don't have to call it mixed use. The, the fact is, is that you know, if, if they, if they you know, were sitting down in a room with each other and talking, they could probably work out a zone that, that would not uh, allow, for example, gas stations without a special permit. I mean, did you know that nowhere in Greenfield, nowhere, none, we have like uh, nine zones in Greenfield ranging from industry to residential. We have nine zones. There's only two where gas stations are allowed. And in both of those zones, commercial and limited commercial and general uh, 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 center commercial, in those two zones, you have to have a special permit to get a gas station. Why? Because gas stations are hazardous uses. Mm. We used to call them Lulu's, a locally undesirable land, land use. Nobody wants to proliferate gas stations. Right. Even <laughs> gas station owners don't want to propose them on every corner because they have underground tanks with, with hazardous material in them, and if there's a leak, there's all kinds of you know, right. environmental hell to pay. So you don't want them everywhere. Uh, we have nine gas stations, at, at least in Greenfield. We don't need more. I have no problem filling my tank uh, by going to a station you know, three minutes away. It's very simple to, to, uh, to, to stop where we are. So the idea of proposing uh, an undesirable land use in another area that was supposed to be an entry, a clean entryway into Greenfield, an attractive mm -hmm. entryway, is just a horrible thing. So that, the, the, but that zone could have been negotiated out through, through uh, a real compromise that had more players at the table. And uh, they still have a little bit of time to do it. The planning board could restore some sanity to this discussion. Okay. Because they get to. Do you the, have confidence in the planning board that we, as it's constituted? Uh, the planning board, I think, uh, has some uh, people with. Uh, a calmer uh, heads than the town council at this point. I, don't, same, I, don't, okay. I doubt that they're going to be thrilled with the idea of proliferating uh, gas stations uh, and, uh, and fast food rest, drive through restaurants. But you never know how much political pressure is being, being put on these people because remember, they're appointed. It, it just, what, what, I suppose what really galls me too, as, as much as this seem, really seems unfair, is that you can do economic studies. Mm -hmm. You can find right. data you can explore the facts right. and you can determine what outcomes are more likely based upon the actions that you take. And so to rush into this because right. one man mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wants to be able to say, aha, I got this done, as opposed to really having So I can eat at a steakhouse. So, or, or whatever, but it doesn't, it doesn't pass the smell test. Right, well it's, I agree. It stinks. Well I agree. You don't, you don't reach a conclusion without your data. You get your data first and then you reach a conclusion. This counselor reached a conclusion about what, what he wanted out on the French King without doing any, producing any data at all about economic impact, traffic impact, nothing. That's a terrible way to do zoning. If I, if I went to the zoning board and tried to do that, they, they would tell me to just go home and do your homework and, and then, then come back. Right, and, and we, you have to come back later, by the way, because we've run out of time. Oh. <laughs> Happy to do it. Al, thank you so much My for, pleasure. for stirring things up and, and helping me to understand what's going on in a pretty, it's actually, it's not as complicated as it seems. It's, no, it's, it's, kind it's, of it's pretty simple, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for tuning in. I'm Drew Hutchison. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. You can catch us at gctv.org and hadleymedia.org and also on your television set. Take care.